2016 word of the year, as identified by the Oxford English Dictionary, is post-truth. In fact, you may have noticed that the Oxford English Dictionary has itself embraced a post-truth society by identifying a word of the year that's actually two words. <laughs> Now, I've, I'm way ahead of the Oxford English Dictionary. I've been living in, uh, I was living in a post-truth world years before 2016 because I am a badger biologist. And it turns out that the truth about badgers is not something that everybody wants to know. Some years ago, I wrote a paper, a scientific paper, in which I showed that culling badgers increases the proportion of the survivors that have TB. Uh, I sent the paper to the, uh, to the government for comment before I sent it to a scientific journal. And the head of TB policy phoned me up. Rosie, I, I'd like to talk to you about this, uh, this paper you sent me. I'm a bit worried about it. Oh, why is that? It's not very balanced. <laughs> what, what do you mean? Will you start off with this introduction where you it, uh, list a whole load of factors that might explain how many badgers have got TB? Yeah. Then there's some graphs and tables. Yeah, those are quite important, yeah. <laughs> and then at the end, you've got this section called the discussion, where you dismiss most of the, most of the explanations and say that only one of them can be right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, it's not very balanced. <laughs> no, no, it, it's, it's not meant to be balanced. It's just, it's, it's science. It's, it's called hypothesis testing. It's how scientists find out the truth. But you said there were lots of possible explanations. Yeah, but only one of them fitted the data. Well, that's not very balanced. <laughs> it's not supposed to be balanced, it's supposed to be true. Conversation went on like this in this vein for some time. Um, it turned out that this, this person who used scientific evidence every day in her job actually had no idea where it came from. It's like those children that grow up in cities and think that milk just comes from, you know, cartons in the supermarket, don't realise it comes from cows. We, shan't, we can't blame policymakers, I subsequently found out, that they're actually given very little scientific training. Uh, or none, in fact. So for the doubtless many policy makers in the audience this evening, um, I would like to explain to you, he's not a policy maker. <laughs> um, um, he said my job was easy. <laughs> oh, you, you already know what I'm going to say, so you won't be surprised. So I would like to explain to you hypothesis testing. So a hypothesis is an idea you have about the world which you test by trying to prove it wrong. And I'd like to give you an example of this using an example that we can all relate to, which is how females choose which male they're going to mate with. <laughs> now, before you start worrying that I'm going to give you some probably misguided and certainly unwelcome relationship advice, rest assured I'm not talking about people, I'm only going to talk about antelope. I'm going to talk about a species of antelope that lives in Africa called the Uganda cob. Now, so we're going to ask, we're going to set hypotheses about what do female Uganda cob want? Hypothesis one, Uganda cob females want resources. What do females want resources? Well, I mean, people, this would be like money. Think billionaires with trophy wives. But uh, Uganda cob, uh, antelope don't need, don't need money. They just need grass and water, maybe protection from lions. There are species of antelope that defend these sorts of resources to attract females, but Uganda cob are not among them. Uganda cob uh, defend tiny, tiny territories that are just a few square metres of bare ground, a bit like this stage. <laughs> so hypothesis one goes, hey babe, come over here, I've got a really great place where you can stand. <laughs> She's like, no, 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 I have an entire African savannah ecosystem to stand in, thanks very much. <laughs> no, no, but here it's great, look, it's great that you can walk across it. And, and then you can walk back, it's, it's really cool. No, no, really, really, thanks. I'm, 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 I've got a dentist appointment, actually. No, no, look, this, this priest has turned around. Oh, she's gone. Hypothesis one, I'm sorry, you tried hard, but you're dismissed. Let's try again. Hypothesis two, females want males that are big, big, strong, sexy males that can give them big, strong, sexy sons that, that, that take their genes into the next generation and beyond. Yes, hypothesis two is the Barry White of the antelope world. 25 stone low machine. Hypothesis two says, baby, take it off. I want you the way you came into this world. Well, you know they say, Little oxpecker birds that 
that hang out on Antwerp in Africa, they're like the backing singers, and they go, love, serenade. Well, a research team darted a bunch of Uganda cob males and weighed them, and they were able to show that the males that got all the action were not conspicuously bigger than the males that were less successful. Hypothesis two, you're huge, but you have type two diabetes and heart disease. I'm sorry, hypothesis to do, you're dismissed. Let's try again. Hypothesis three, females copy one another. One surefire way to get, a, get an attractive partner is to choose someone that others have chosen before you. How can we test this one? Well, it turns out that when a female antelope is in the mood, she goes up to a male, squats, and pees. And he smells it. Ladies and gentlemen, just for a moment, this is where we pause and we give thanks for all the evolutionary pathways that our ancestors did not take. I'm, uh, I'm not even gonna, I'm not even gonna mention the, uh, the bullet we dodged when our ancestors bypassed the baboon branch of the evolutionary tree. Sexual swellings. Oh. Anyway, so you get into cold females pee, and what happens over time is that the territories of successful males get kind of smelly, and females coming onto those territories for the first time sniff the ground. So maybe for them it's like, oh, this poorly lit car park stairwell makes me hot. <laughs> so to test this hypothesis, a, a scientist um, uh, named James Deutsch a friend of mine, used a very, very uh, refined piece of scientific equipment to test this hypothesis. The piece of scientific equipment is called a bulldozer. <laughs> and he dug up all the topsoil from the, uh, the territories of successful males, and he swapped it with the topsoil of, of territories of less successful males. And because he was a very good scientist, he also dug up the soil from some other territories and put it straight back. Because who knows if maybe disturbed soil is somehow a turn-on for antelope. <laughs> Uh, what happened? Well, it turns out that those sexy males weren't nearly so sexy when they had some nerdy guy's topsoil. <laughs> but the males that hadn't been so successful before, suddenly they'd been given this, this, this new topsoil, suddenly they were real studs. All the females that had shunned them before suddenly wanted to, wanted to mate with them again and again. It was like, ah, oh, darling, how is it for you? The earth moved. <laughs> So, so that is how we learn. That is how, by hypothesis testing, that is how scientific knowledge advances. Policymakers, that's where knowledge comes from. That's where scientific knowledge comes from. But to test hypotheses, you need to, to, uh, to be willing to be proven wrong. Uh, that's absolutely essential. It's the mindset of scientists, but it's difficult to sell in a post-truth world. So let's embrace the word of the year for 2016. Let me promise to you that 2017 will bring us chocolate that makes us thin. <laughs> A randomized controlled trial of badger vaccination. <laughs> and an extra 350 pounds a month, 350 million pounds a week for the NHS. Happy New Year. <laughs>
Have you been over to see the antelopes? Oh, yes. Yes, I used to live in Uganda. Oh, wow. Okay. Mm -hmm. Did you live amongst them, learn the ways? <laughs> <laughs> Is that like antelopes in the mist? Was it? <laughs> no, I'm more an African wild dog person. Okay. <laughs> can, Team wild dog and back. <laughs> can antelopes be tamed? Uh, not very well. They still got a butt. Okay. Have you tried? Have you tried? I have a friend that tried. Wow. Okay. Um, and how did it turn out? Uh, not well. Not well. Oh shit. But warthogs. Warthogs make quite good pets. Do they? Yeah. Okay. Anyone looking for a? Household pets at the oh, moment. Hyenas are even better. Hyenas. hyenas. Are hyenas no one's burgling your house if, if no, you've got hyenas in nothing. Not, yeah, no. yeah. Brilliant. Okay. Can we have a massive round of applause for the fantastic Rosie there, ladies and gentlemen? Wonderful.